Like we never left, though. Did we? Did we even? <laughs> I don't think we did. What's going on, everybody? Welcome into the Toyota Lounge. Beep, beep. Burp, 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 <laughs> The Toyota Lounge, driven by your front range Toyota stores. Yeah. Toyota, the official vehicle of DNVR. What's going on, everybody? Welcome into today's show. We're presented by Bet365 Never Ordinary. Harrison Wind, alongside Brendan Vogt. What's up, man? Like I like I always enjoy a two man game, you know. Change up the pace a little bit, change the speed. Yeah. Have finish some thoughts in your head. Hear say complete sentences and do a mic. It's always <laughs> nice. Nuggets got the win last night over the Spurs. We could do a little hangover takes segment if you want. I mean, I don't have much to say that we didn't say on last night's show, but uh, Kale and I were talking about this before we started recording. Jokic Wemby was just so fun. I know. I and know. like we'll we'll get into uh, the uh, latest straw poll and um, Chauncey Billups made the Hall of Fame. We'll talk about that, and then we got a great mailbag coming up as well. But just to start with last night's game, real quick, that was fun. Jokic Wemby is such a fun matchup. We spent a lot of time on last night's show talking about how much it seemed like Jokic enjoyed. Yes, just the uh, the challenge of going up against Wemby and. Every time that those two go against one another, I feel like it's going to be a appointment viewing. Absolute appointment viewing now. I had the same thought. I wrote the same thing in grades that it already is. Forget years to come. Like, it already was starting this year. A great matchup. Wemby defensively, just a different guy than anyone we've ever seen. And nobody is better at solving puzzles than Jokic. And I just loved how eager he looked to do it. Yeah. And I'm really glad that Adam asked that question in the post game about Tim Duncan, you know, sort of comparing Wemby playing against Jokic now to Jokic playing against Tim Duncan back in the day. Yeah. Cause it was hard not to think about that watching that game that we had a, we'd really come full circle in a lot of ways. Yeah. And I think Jokic is going to be one of those guys that like, I wouldn't be surprised if he is, he's going to be competing with these guys, but you know, the vets that seem invested in the success of the next generation, Maybe offering tips here and there, advice, yeah. or like, hey, that was a good performance tonight. And, you know, I, I think Yoke has a lot of that to him, that he might be kind of aging into more of a steward for this, and, and especially a steward of the bigs. And it just, it was really cool watching the palpable mutual respect between those two. It was cool to watch. I mean, you can tell Yoke really respects the hell out of Wemby. Yes. Just like he respects a lot of the other. Big men of the next generation. Shangun, we know he has a lot of respect for. We know Shangun like, looks up to Jokic like he's, you know, his idol. Um, you know, there are other bigs out there as well. But it did seem like Yoke played really hard last night. Yep. And, you know, since the All Star break, obviously, post text message, he's been, you know, a full go for the most part. He's been going 100%. He's been trying to set the tone. But there have been a couple games where it's like, oh, there's you know, regular season Jokic against not a great team. The Spurs, the Nuggets needed Jokic's 40 points to win last night. Yeah, But, you know, you could have envisioned it as a game where he doesn't exactly come out, you know, exactly full throttle. But he did. You know, he did. And I agree. I think part of it is because he really does want to set an example for that next generation. That's yep. cool. That's a cool thing. He just can't help himself. He loves basketball too yep. much. Ironic. He loves it too he much. He just loves it too much. Yeah. Um, I don't have anything else in the game, though. I think we got most of our thoughts out last night. Other than that, we maybe understated how good Aaron Gordon was. Mm. As I went through kind of rewatching his possessions, looking at his box score in general, really an A-plus game from Aaron Gordon. Now, it should have been against that Spurs front court outside of Wemby, but it was, and Denver needed it too. So I thought those two came to play and – you know, 
everyone else struggled to make shots. AG, two of four from deep, three of three from the line. Ironically, the only guy who was really efficient as a shot maker outside of Jokic last night. Yeah. So he was good. I mean, that's something to keep an eye on, I think, heading into the playoffs. Aaron Gordon's three-point shot and his free throw percentage. It's you, really the only weakness of the starting five. And he just has to be just comfortable enough. It's, it's like last night was a good example because he was two of four. The shots all actually looked pretty good. But do you remember the one he didn't take in crunch time? It was yep. like the left corner. Yep. And he thought about it. Yep. And he, and and Jokic just said, no, nah, man, let's reset this. And, and Aaron holstered it. And I like that's the perfect balance. Confident enough to take the wide open ones, I think, in quarters one through three. But in the possessions you really need, you know, have the sort of wherewithal to, to and the self-awareness to kind of hold back. And I thought he did. Because every time Aaron Gordon takes and misses a three, everybody's like, why is Aaron Gordon ever shooting a three? Like right. He should never shoot threes. Like, I actually disagree. I think he should take open threes if it's in the rhythm of the offense. Right. That's it. You know, you can't just look at a guy like Aaron Gordon and say, you are not allowed to shoot threes. That's not how it works. That's not how basketball works. He's a good enough shooter to take open threes, you know, within the offense. If, you know, the Nuggets, if he's not shooting that instead of trying to get a better shot. Um, but, yeah, you just want him confident. If he's open in a corner, I think he should. You know, yeah. if Jokic finds you in the corner, that was intentional. Let it fly. And I think from the right corner, he's been decent this year. But it's the, it's the sort of... Like, okay, we're on a run. I'm going to take this pull-up three, put it between my legs for no reason first. Right, kind of yeah, stuff. we don't need those. We don't need. But there is a balance, and I thought last night was a great example. He took four of them, hit two of them, and then the biggest one where he got caught with indecision, he just said, let's holster. We have Jokic, and they figured it out. Yeah. I mean, a strategy against the Nuggets in the playoffs is undoubtedly to leave Aaron Gordon open. We've seen teams do it many, many times before. The Warriors a couple years ago, teams – during the Nuggets playoff run last year did. I assume whoever the Nuggets draw in the first round will do that as well. It's kind of the most basic way to stop or to try to corral the Nuggets offense, throw them off a little bit, is to just let him shoot open threes. So if he's confident, I, I do think that goes a long way. Agreed. We got a new straw poll. From our buddy Tim Bontemps. These have barely been in the in the conversation this year compared to last year. I know. On straw poll day last year, it was like, all right, batten down the hatches. Oh, man. Uh, get your guns. like Buckle up for yeah. a race war <laughs> by the end, which was cool. Yeah, that was, that was awesome. But a uh, new straw poll dropped. Are you surprised that Nikola Jokic is running away with the MVP? Got 85 out of 100 potential first place votes. 10 first place votes went to SGA. Just one to Luka, two to Giannis, and two to Tatum. Are you surprised it's this much of a runaway? A little bit. I mean, those things are always kind of tough, too, because we don't actually know the gap. Like, we know the gap in how the votes were placed, but we don't know for each individual voter how close it was, right? Conceivably... Everyone who voted Jokic first could have agonized over that choice. Yeah. But I think part of it is that SGA, like, I don't know what the Thunder are up to here down the stretch. He's been out. He's injured. Yeah. Are they maybe comfortable with sliding down? He, um, he hasn't been maybe quite as good as Jokic and Luka down the stretch. Obviously, he had that game winner, and he's had some moments. But I'm a little bit surprised. I just thought as long as OKC was this much in the running for a top seed that he would have a chance or at least have more of the contrarian momentum. That being said, I wonder if what's happening is if on the contrarian side of the fence, those votes are just being split between Luka and SGA a little bit. So it's, it's I don't know, it's interesting. Yeah, I think SGA is tailing off at the worst time possible. Yeah. Because even though March and April basketball are is the least serious basketball ever, it's the most important basketball in terms of the MVP voting sometimes. I mean, just look at last year. You know, in the second of three straw polls, Nikola Jokic held a commanding lead in the MVP. And then, you know, when the Nuggets stopped really caring about the regular season and some other stuff happened, he lost the MVP. Um 
Yeah, SGA getting hurt right now combined with, like, the Thunder not leading the Western Conference probably contributes to some of this as well. Um, but also, if you just look at the t- totality of what Jokic has done, coming off the championship, another, you know, historic season, uh, it's not a surprise that he's leading it, but... He's also kind of, I know we don't really do it this way, kind of, but he's owed one a little bit from last year as well. There's a benefit of the doubt thing, I think, for some voters of they watch the playoffs. And as much as I think Embiid actually did out, outright win that award in the regular season, yeah, and deservingly so, I do think when the playoffs happen and everyone, oh, yeah, that's right. Like, there's a the best player in the world conversation isn't close. And so maybe there's a... For anyone who's kind of close, okay, Ty goes to the guy who's very clearly proven himself as the most valuable player in the league across a sustained stretch here. I also think there's something to where voting is so public now, you know, and like I know the five media people who have never voted Jokic MVP in the last three years. Right. Not going to say their names, but I know who they are because every vote's public. Just for the record, I know who those five people are. He has a list. I've seen the list. <laughs> it's got a headline. It's got a title. The list has a has a headline. Jokic Haters Club. I yep. mean, it's it's there. Maybe I'll reveal it at some point. I don't know. But people don't want to be on the wrong side of history now. Right. And now that Nikola Jokic has the championship, he's undeniable. If they win it again this year, he's vaulting into a pantheon that only so many players have ever reached. And we're talking... You know, top 15 players ever that you don't want to get caught looking like an idiot and not having voted this guy MVP in a year like this. Right. I think that's some of it too. Then you got to pull Mark Jackson and say, I just forgot. Or no, no, it was an error, right? Was it, was it, did he forget to put him down or was it a technical (laughs) error? I can't remember. I think he said he just forgot. I just forgot. I just forgot. I, I, you know, sometimes you just forget. When putting down my most valuable players, I admittedly forgot the guy that I think is first. I did just forget him. Sometimes you just forget. Oh, man. Yeah. Uh, Molary, those are not the correct names. No, those are not them. Sorry. I Do you think SGA holds on to number two in this, or do you think Luka gets second? I think SGA is going to hold on to number two. Yeah. Because is the Luca MVP bump more just fake people talking on Twitter and not actually what's really happening? Maybe, possibly. I think I think Luca's so good. I think Luca's the second best player in the league. Easy, full stop. I don't think it's actually that close. I think he is too, and I think he's so good that in people in our situation, and even just people fans tweeting or talking to their friends in their living room, you kind of want to at least bring him up. He's so good. It feels blasphemous to just not mention him. But I also think, excuse me, that was kind of gross. I also think that uh, we wrote, I did wrote this in our round table recently. If Luke is the most valuable player in the league and he's a top two player in the world and Kyrie is finally in all the headlines for, for all the right reasons, basketball related reasons, and they won the trade deadline and they're this emerging contender who's the biggest threat to, to Denver out West, why are they seven games out of first? To me, the gap is big enough that, like, is it Luca's fault? No, but is he really so valuable that it's closing that gap? I don't, I, to me, there's a little bit of, um, the, there's still a little bit of theory in all of Luca and Mavs is, is greatness and not necessarily like, they have to still go do it a little bit. Does that make sense? Oh, for sure. So if I'm a Thunder fan, I'm thinking to myself, Hang on. We're possibly going to finish first in this loaded, improved Western Conference. Yeah. But but everyone is telling me both my team's too young to be taken seriously and my best player should be third in this conversation. I would be furious, you know? I'd be really, really annoyed by that. So I think SGA should be too, and I think it'll finish that way. But the fact that he's not playing games right now doesn't help. Definitely. Where would Jason Tatum fall on your ballot? Would you have him fifth? Would you give him the fifth spot? Sure. I, here's what else I would say. Okay, sure. Here's what else I would say. I think we've like kind of lost the plot on most valuable player when we've worked it all the way down to five. You know? Like the fifth most valuable You only player. want a three-man ballot. Yeah. Like, are you really in the conversation if you were fifth? 
Not really. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely... Is it it feels the, like three tiers right now. Jokic, SGA Luka, and then the rest. I agree. I agree. But, yeah, that's kind of my point. I mean, it's... Like, we could mention Tatum in this, but does he honestly have any... Is he anywhere close to the three guys we just mentioned? No. So what's the point? Yeah. I remember when Kevin Love finished, I think, fourth, and it was... <laughs> We used to talk about him as MVP candidate, Kevin Love. Like, what yeah, year was that? Not really. Uh, one of his final years in Minnesota. Wow. Yeah. Um, yeah, Tatum is fifth in this, two first-place votes. Jalen Brunson, sixth with three third-place votes. Somebody voted Anthony Edwards, two. That's a bit much. Somebody Although, voted Anthony Edwards, second. That's why he's seventh on here. I mean, the Wolves are great, but I, uh, that's a bit much. It's a bit much for me. Yeah. All right, let's hit a break. Let's talk about Chauncey Billups on the other side, finally getting into the Hall of Fame, and then we got a bunch of mailbag questions. Somebody asked if the Nuggets are going to draft DJ Burns out of NC State. Let's go, dude. Let's I'm kind of here it. for it. So am I, dude. So am I. Do you know why? Because DJ Burns sounds like he has the making of a durable legend destined for greatness. Oh, he definitely drives Toyota. And, like, he might be perfect for Colorado, just like... Toyota. Your front range Toyota stores are excited to begin their new partnership with us. DNVR. Toyota is officially the official vehicle of DNVR, baby. And trucks in Colorado, well, they go together. There's a real there's a real association there. And trucks have always been in Toyota's DNA. For generations, they built durable legends destined for greatness. Whether you're conquering off-road trails or hauling the weight of the world, there's a Toyota truck that's just right for you. Like the all-new 2024 Tacoma and the return of the iconic 2024 Land Cruiser that's coming this spring. Visit your Front Range Toyota stores at a location near you. Auto Nation Toyota, Arapaho and Centennial, Corwin Toyota in Boulder, Groove Toyota in Littleton, Mountain States Toyota in Denver, Stevenson and Toy Toyota East in Aurora, and Stevenson Toyota West in Lakewood. Toyota is a proud partner of the Denver Nuggets and the official vehicle of DNVR. And man, I'm really excited to talk to you guys about Lavello Construction. They specialize in all things roofing, gutters, siding, and paint for your home here in the Front Range. It's a wide, uh, wide array of services. And here's the fun part. They're a woman-owned company, and they'll always answer whenever you call. They also offer painless and quick ways to get a quote for a new roof without ever having to talk to someone. So don't let an inexperienced contractor give you the full court press. Lots of people there do want to rip you off in these industries. Call Lavello for a complimentary consultation and a 64-point complimentary inspection. They will work with you. Just scan the QR code below or call 303-578-8551 to get your coat quote in under a minute. It'll be quicker than the lines to grab beer at a Nuggets game. In the words of Jokic, an assist makes two people happy. Happy. Let Lavello assist you in making your home's exterior renovations a slam dunk. Jokic, big dunker these days. Three in the first quarter last night. I know. Um, he was throwing it down on Wemby. He sure was. Though we're counting that as a dunk on Wemby, right? I know Wemby was behind him, but... He was in the vicinity. He went for the block, and he missed. And we got a picture, so I'm calling it a poster. I'm calling it a poster. Yeah. I think <clears throat> we can call it that. Guys, big news on the Hall of Fame front... Reports came in this morning that Colorado legend, former George Washington high school player, former University of Colorado player, and former Nugget Chauncey Billups, heading to the Hall of Fame. I feel like this is well-deserved. Um, he's been on like the, uh, the cusp, I feel like, of getting in the last several years, but he's going in this year. I mean, you're not from here. I'm curious what your Chauncey takes are. Does he feel like a Hall of Famer to you? He feels kind of, to me, like right on the bubble. You know, there, you see these guys a lot in baseball, I think. Uh, although the, the Basketball Hall of Fame has a bit more of a lenient, it's much more lenient, really, in terms of letting people in. But sometimes there are these players where their case is almost more, you had to just have seen them. Like, these guys were winning players. Winning followed them in their wake. And... Chauncey has a lot of that, almost like a Yadier Molina in baseball. Yeah, he's a winner. Of just, sure. yeah, okay, statistically, is he, like, more dominant than other players in any one category? No. But if you watch his career, the guy just won everywhere he went. And he's certainly a Colorado Basketball Hall of Famer. K-1 
king of Park Hill. And so it's great representation for the state and cool for him. I do think uh, Vince Carter got in as well, right? Yeah, he was the other one that was leaked today. Vince Carter is another one that I almost feel we associate kind of ideas with Vince Carter more strongly than we reflect on his actual career. Does that make sense? Obviously, this incredible dunker, one of the coolest hoopers to ever do it. But then also, was he really a Hall of Famer, Vince Carter? I mean, by the standards they've set, yes. but it, Definitely, yeah. But it is lenient. It is lenient. It's like if Vince Carter didn't have that one dunk contest, his case is probably tougher. Right. That's He's cool. probably still Hall of Famer, but like that's what you think of. At least that's what I think of when I think of Vince Carter. The 2000 yeah. dunk contest, I think it was. Yep, totally, no. man. But basketball, especially the NBA, obviously it's the Basketball Hall of Fame. The NBA is still relatively young, all things considered, and... I, I just think that they've set a, maybe a different precedent for um, yeah for, for, for barrier of entry than other Hall of Fames. We'll see how that ages. What I like to think about is, can you tell the story of the NBA without this player? Right. And I kind of feel like Chauncey Billups' Pistons teams are pretty instrumental to the story of how the last you know 30 years of basketball have I gone. Agree. Like the Pistons teams that he was on, you know, obviously they beat that Lakers super team in the finals the one year. Like that is a very like that's a bullet point, you know, in NBA history over the last couple decades. Right. That that's a that's a series that I think taught a lot of people about the game, the defense that the Pistons played with, how well they played as a team. That's a very important marker, I feel like, when you look back on the game. And so that stuff I always want to be celebrated. And, I mean, you could say the same thing about Vince Carter in that dunk contest maybe, but those Pistons teams are so important, I think, in just telling the story of the NBA over you know the last yeah. 30 years to where he, it's important that he gets in for that. Totally, and if, I agree. I, just, I think of him first with those teams. Yeah, um, me too. And honestly, I mean, yeah. well, yeah. yeah. Now, they have a strong... They're like the real Uber Atlanta Hawks. Like they have a very strong case for you think of their starting lineup. But honestly, Chauncey was the guy and he was, I mean, he was the best player on that team. He was. Chauncey Billups, Rip Hamilton, Tayshawn Prince, Rasheed Wallace, Ben Wallace. Chauncey Billups was probably the best player on that team. And in 09, he was the best nugget on that in that playoff run. I don't know if he was better than Carmelo Anthony in a vacuum, but I thought he was better in that run. At least more impactful in the big games. That guy's a winner, man. He's a winner. Yeah. So that's very cool. I believe it's getting formally announced this weekend at the Final Four. So, um, yeah, that's cool to see Chauncey Billups get that recognition and go in. Should we go to the mailbag here? Mail time. Let's open up the mailbag. Got a lot of great questions from you guys. And I want to start with this one from Josh Barnett. We talked about this a little bit on the show last night because, of course... Nikola Jokic passed Carmel Anthony. That's right. For most points scored in a Nuggets uniform. He's now third all time. Alex English is still first. Josh asks, though, how many years will Joker need to catch Alex English? Do you predict he does it? I did the math on this one. Oh, nice. Right now, Jokic is at 13,978 points. Alex English is at 21,645 points. That's a difference of 7,667 points. Nikola Jokic needs to average 25 points per game for the next five seasons and play in 70 games to clear that. And that easily clears it. That puts him about, you know, almost 1,000 points past that. So he could probably get that in like four and a half seasons. So four and a half to five seasons... I think it will take you know, Jokic averaging you know, 24, 25 points a game for 70 games. He's 29? Yeah. Can it's he do table. that? It's on the table, but the other thing is, I don't know about getting it done in that window. Right. He could average you know, 22, 23 points across seven, eight years. And I, I am, I've come all the way around. I think it's going to be a long career for Jokic. Oh, yeah. Uh, relatively long for centers. I just, he's pretty durable. Wouldn't it be funny if after all this, Jokic plays 20 years? It's kind of what I mean, man. He has a longer career than most stars. 
yeah, I mean, obviously he's a big guy, and the back is going to, like, for, for for any big at this point in their career, like, they're icing that back constantly. Yeah. And the knees in the back, it, it gets harder. But that's the thing about Yoke is how often is he clearing the rim? How often is he jumping? How much shock are those knees under, you know, uh, subject to compared to guys like Anthony Davis, you know? And so, and, and also, what is he going to lose a step? Like, whatever. He's going to be good for another 10 years. He's if he gets slower, I don't think it's going to hurt him really. He could average thirteen points and like eighteen assists in his final year. So yeah, I think he's going to do it. But when TBD, it's going to be really cool to have Nikola Jokic leading the Nuggets in all-time points, rebounds, yeah. and assists, like yep. it should. As it that's should. a cool As he should. thing for him to have. Next question here from. Um, Sean, could the Nuggets draft DJ Burns? After getting Jokic's approval a few days ago, would definitely help the non-Jokic minutes. Have you been watching this guy? Yes. Uh, DJ I, Burns, NC State, darling of the tournament so far. Okay, let me ask you this. Why not? <laughs> Why not? Could it get any worse? Why not? <laughs> you know, and your, your current center rose to prominence without really having any of the traditional center qualities yeah. and conditioning. Fat is just potential in disguise, a lot of people say. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and conditioning issues and all that. Look, the guy can hoop. I don't really know if he's an NBA prospect. I think projected second rounder right now. And even that, I mean, I don't... It, Somebody will probably talk themselves into taking him in the second round. But think about how many backup centers... That, are, that fit the bill traditionally or might look more athletic or have all the tools or be slated higher on the mock drafts that Denver could take and then would not work out here. Just would absolutely look just like every other center has for the last five years. Yeah. So part of me wants to say, why not? So I think I've come around to the take that the best chance of a backup center working in Denver <gasps> is if, He's dollar store Nikola Jokic. Correct. If he's, you know, thrift shop Mason Plumley. If he's a guy who can play make a little bit and pass and be a little bit of a hub of what you do. I'm willing to try that now. Like I want to try that again. I don't want to do what we've been doing the last couple of years. Yeah. I want to try that. And DJ Burns could score a little. No, he can pass. He can facilitate. I don't know if he's going to be a good NBA player. He's a fun guy to watch, absolutely. Jokic obviously enjoys watching him. He's super skilled. He's only 6'9". Yeah, I don't care. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Denver's playing Zeke Naji at center right now, anyway. Yeah, Zeke's not that much taller than 6'9". Yeah. Um, I'm down for it. Uh, yeah, again, I don't... There are There's s- no risk here. That's it, really. <laughs> I mean, that's it. It's like a little second you round. You literally flyer. could not get worse Look, on they, the second unit. They did a different regime. They did take a flyer on Bull Bull. You know what I mean? Like, whatever. Yeah. Well, give, it, give it a shot. Give it a shot. If nothing else, just because of how fun it would be to see what Jokic could do with him. You know? Little 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 mentor role for Jokic. It'd be fun. Yeah. Uh, DJ Birds, I can already envision it. You know, on his flight to Denver... For uh, his first practice, it's the last last Coke Coke he's ever drank. Last one. Yeah. Enjoy it, DJ. I, I heard he actually can't do a push-up. I heard. This is perfect. Yeah, I heard he this can't is, do a is, push-up. He, can, he can't even hold a plank for 20 seconds. Bring him over. I'm in. <laughs> um, this question comes from Justin Galt. Bench player scored 10-plus in the playoff 17 times last year for the Nuggets. 15 of those were Bruce. Wow. How many times does that occur this year? Definitely say less than uh, 10. Yeah, it's a great question because I don't... Less than 17, I mean. I kind of feel... I don't I feel okay about the bench, I guess, in a short in a shortened rotation, but I don't think they're going to have that. Like, I think Reggie could do it a handful of times, like, you know, maybe five I could see a bit more, but I don't know how many games for Peyton or Christian are going to have much more than I 10 mean, points. 17 is a lot considering the Nuggets only played 
20 playoff games last year. Yeah, no, that's insane. I That's crazy. I mean, that's Bruce Brown. Yeah. I get I mean, I mean Christian could have some 12ers here and there. Christian go can go for 10, absolutely. But it's Reggie it's, Jackson can go for it's 10. Going to be Reggie really, I think. Pewat maybe he's got one 10-point game in him, maybe. Yeah. So I'd say like maybe half that. To be honest, I, I'd say 10 is like the max. That I could see. I, I do too. I think there's going to be a big difference. And luckily, the starters are better because I do think they're going to actually have to be a little bit better in their minutes. Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't think the bench is a downright disaster, but not having that Bruce factor. Because in the regular season, I, I thought Bruce was a, maybe a bit overrated in Denver. In the, in the postseason, to that, to that, the point of this question is where he really showed his value. Uh, Justin also says, congrats to Chauncey on making the Hall of Fame. How many Nuggets end up making it from this core? From I mean, who, core. Kn- who knows? One for One. sure. Could Mart <laughs> Murray's going to have the weirdest resume. To Zero All-Stars, at. 10 or championships. Has anyone, made, has anyone made a Hall of Fame without making an All-Star team? It's a great question. He might be. I would doubt it. I would doubt it. He might be our best chance. But I mean, he's definitely got Hall of Fame potential. He does. He's also if you make win, awesome you know, if you're part of a dynasty, if you're the second best player in a dynasty, you're going to make the Hall of Fame. Well, that's kind of that's. So yeah. I'd say probably probably two. Right. If he's so strongly associated with this two man game as he would be as yeah. half of it, and this Denver does end up being everything we hope and think they will be over the next two or three, there's his case yeah. right there. I'd say so. Two, I'd say two guys have a legit chance. Yeah. Uh, this comes from. Flo, what has been the most surprising thing to you about this Nuggets regular season? Oh, to me, it's it's Porter being the Iron Man, having only missed one game. Did you see what uh, our guy Miroslav tweeted the other day? Is it Porter's podcast appearance today? <laughs> Episode uh, today? No, 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 that he's twenty. That he's like twenty fifth overall in minutes in the yeah. NBA. Yeah, that's got to be it. That's definitely tough. That's definitely tough. Really, it's that I would not have seen that coming. I would know. I just that's got, definitely. I tough. just got what you were doing. <laughs> uh, that is definitely tough. Oh man, that's crazy though. I didn't see that coming, and I don't even know if it's necessarily like best best for his season as far as how productive he could be in any one game. It's just so clearly a priority for him. He's very proud of it. He's very yeah, excited he that he's played this many games. Probably because I think NBA doctors were telling him he'd never play basketball again during the draft. So to, I think to have to have a season like this, knock on wood, as we finish up here, I think has got to be the pleasant surprise. Yeah, absolutely. I think maybe for me it's been just the number of wins and the fact that the Nuggets have a chance to set a new franchise regular season wins mark. <laughs> Like, usually after a championship, you have a hangover. Right. You have a championship hangover. It's a great point, dude. Usually the regular season after you win a championship is terrible. This has been a great regular season, though. And we still have kind of felt at times, oh, are they really taking it seriously? Yeah. I think part of it is that when the Nuggets play their very best basketball, it, maybe even we have lost sight of like how good it is and what that does to expectations. So when they're not playing at that level at any point in time, things feel precarious or disappointing or frustrating. Uh, But the reality is, is because we expect basketball that's at a much higher level than anything else anyone else is putting out there in the league. Yeah. And so I think that's part of it this year. To your point, Murray's going to miss 20 plus games. And it's a loaded, everyone said the West got better. It did. And the Nuggets are going to come back and maybe possibly set the team record. So that's a good one as well. Yeah. Let's hit another break. Some more mailbag questions to get to on the other side. Some good ones as well. Some Jamal Murray questions about his health heading into the playoffs. Uh, Some other ones about uh, who could guard Nikola Jokic, Jamal Murray, and Aaron Gordon the best in the league. We'll see. Oh, man. Well, it's not quite. It's it's still a work day at 3.50, so it's not Miller time just yet, Harrison. It's almost Miller time, though, if you want it to be. Uh, it's a world rapidly changing around you, friends, changing every day. 
uh, I don't. I, it gets harder to navigate every day, and that's why I love the things that stay the same. You know, the things I know I can expect. A lot's changed over the years, but one thing that hasn't is the great taste of Miller Lite, the original light beer. The first, the rest are, rest are but shadows of the form, my friends. This is the original, and it's still the best. They've got more of the taste you want with less of the stuff you don't. Miller Lite pairs well with a Nuggets win, pairs well with a winner's lounge, pairs well with a loser's lounge, to be honest, as well. It really just pairs well with Nuggets basketball. Again, times change, but you can always enjoy the great taste of Miller Lite. Tastes like Miller time. To get Miller Lite delivered right to your door, visit MillerLite.com slash DNVR. Or you can find it pretty much anywhere that sells beer. Celebrate responsibly. Miller Brewing Company in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. 96 calories per 12 ounces. And then if you're trying to go see the Denver Nuggets in person, or really go see any of your favorite events in, in Denver, Colorado, like for example, Rockies on opening day. Oh yeah, that's an option. You can get the Friday. best best seats at the best price with game time the hot new ticket app that's selling last minute tickets and it is now an authorized ticket marketplace of major league baseball which makes getting tickets even faster and easier prices on the game time app may actually go down the closer it gets to first pitch and of course you guys know you've got a beautiful downtown ballpark here in denver so you can just hang out and wait are we going tonight i don't know let's wait we'll check game time until boom you see the right seat at the best price and you're in there. It's that easy. Uh, just take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. For a limited time, all users can get twenty dollars off any MLB purchase of one hundred fifty dollars or more in the Game Time app with the code First Pitch. Terms do apply. That's code First Pitch for twenty dollars off from March twenty fifth to April fourteenth only. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, back here on the DNVR Nuggets podcast, live from the Toyota Lounge. Let's get back into the mailbag here. Ethan Holiday asks, if you had to pick one player in the league to somewhat effectively guard Jamal, Aaron Gordon, and Jokic, who would you choose? Is it Wemby? <laughs> it honestly might be. Like, down the line, it'll be Wemby. Jokic can still can still get him. I, I honestly still think Rudy Gobert is the best individual Jokic defender in the league. And yeah. I would still take, I mean, I, I know who's prevailing in a series, in my opinion. I actually agree. I think Gobert is the best Jokic defender. He was like the first villain, boss villain Slade. And so we kind of moved past him. And we've come full circle. And honestly, if you look at the head-to-head matchups, like Rudy plays Jokic pretty well. Like who even else is in the conversation? You know? Yeah. It's Bam, probably Rudy. But like that feels... Now a lot of it is is that Rudy, you know... they. You go even going back to the Utah days, those Rudy teams were the first ones to start messing around with what we now call the Rui adjustment. So that's yeah. some of it as well. But ultimately, he is also one of the few centers who guards him straight up now. So he he uh, he's just really good. Like he's an insanely good positional defender, and Jokic will get the better of anyone on a long enough timeline. But he's still the best for me. What do you think about this one from Golden Era Carbic? Could the Nuggets win a first round series regardless of opponent without Jamal Murray? Sorry, real, real quick. Chat just brought up uh, a Wendell Carter Jr. Because he also has some game. I think the Wendell Carter thing is bullshit. Me too. It's that he plays him twice a year in games he doesn't care about. I've actually gone and investigated this. For some reason, Jokic took a ton of threes in those games, mm. and he just shot really bad from three. Yeah, I think the, the, all the guys that always look like stoppers, it's just that. You catch him once or twice a year when he's unserious. Yeah. But if he has enough data against you, he's going to make your life hell. So could the Nuggets win a first-round series without Jamal? Huh. Could they beat the Kings without Jamal Murray? I think they could. I think they could, too. I think they could. I think they could. Could they beat, I think they could beat anybody them. else, though, in the West? Could they beat the Warriors without Jamal Murray? I don't know. I don't know. It's a good question. How did they beat that Blazers team? Dude. <laughs> what the hell happened that series? Dude. I. Yeah, man. Don't get me started on Dame. That's not today's because show. Because... The supporting cast, even if you take out Jamal Murray, is so much better than that supporting cast now. It's it's that's the thing. 
That's the thing. This is a better. T- Portland should be disgusted by that series. <laughs> they should be. They, that was the first series they the Nuggets won in under seven games. By the way, <laughs> it's the first one that they wrapped up quickly. I do think Faku scored on Dame a couple of times, so that might be your story. So I think they could beat the Kings. I think they could beat the Pelicans. Although I'm famously not a Pelicans believer. Yeah. I'm not a Pelicans believer, like at the core. There's a there's a spirit thing. I don't I don't mean like spiritually. I mean like a spirit of the team, spirit of like uh who your who your best players are. They're, I'm not buying New Orleans. Yeah. However, on paper, I think they present a lot of bad matchups for a lot of teams. And I think Denver is actually one of them. Jokic would dominate and prevail. But I think Denver is one of them. And without Jamal, they've got a lot of lawn defenders that could throw on Reggie and make his life very difficult. So, I mean, like, I don't, I don't buy the Pelicans to win, for, to win a championship. But I buy them to give you a hard time. And I think they match up well with different teams. Yeah. Other than that, though, I don't, I don't know if they could beat. My real answer is I sure hope that doesn't happen. I sure hope that doesn't happen. Yeah. And, I mean, let's get to the next question here because that does have to do with Jamal Murray's health. How much of a concern is there within the Nuggets organization about Jamal's health? So I, I think he would be playing right now if it was the playoffs. I think he'd be playing right now if the Nuggets really needed a win, like if it was a must-win situation. But... um. I think there's just some concern because there's been so many things that have piled up on top of each other. You had the hamstring earlier in the year, the ankle, now it's the knee. Uh, It's a lot of lower extremity issues on top of one another, on top of one another. And Jamal's just had a bunch of those things throughout his career. So it is definitely a concern, I think, within the Nuggets. But I don't have... like a. I'm not overly concerned about him being good to go for the playoffs. Yeah. I mean, we've seen him warm up. We've even seen him kind of like running around in the back hallway. And yeah. Obviously, that stuff is is hardly a, any sort of medical test done by a doctor, me watching him run. But he looks good. Like, if he had to run and sprint, he could. He's not limping around. I, I, I'm with you that if it was a playoff game, he could play. But there's just a general... Whereas Jokic, the whole thing seems to be like where he's just going to play through this. He wants this. We trust him as long as the doctors haven't said he can't play. Like, he's playing. I do think the team is moving towards a, diff- a much more cautious approach with Murray in general. Of j- It's really almost the opposite. Like, we're not going to force Murray through these things. Uh, especially if he's, ta- if he's feeling discomfort, if he's vocal about that. Because like you said, there's a lot of stuff that's been adding up. And... I, I just feel like they've always been a bit more cautious with Murray's health than Jokic's. Yeah. I mean, I will say, I feel like they didn't manage it as good as they could have about a month ago when he did hurt that ankle. No, I'm saying it seems like a, a recent a realization. Ago. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of like, and that's the thing right now is it's not that ankle or it's just right knee inflammation. To me, it's almost just like, yeah, his, his legs hurt. <laughs> There's a lot going on. And so they're just not... Right now, the approach seems to be we're just not taking chances with this. Yeah. Uh, this question comes from Bryson. How confident are you guys if KCP leaves in free agency and Christian Brown has to step into the starting rotation? How does that change, and what areas could that make the starting lineup better? Uh, well, I don't know if you get better in any one way. You probably get worse. You definitely get worse. I don't know if there's any area in which you get better. I will say this. I think Brown is ready to do half of it. I think when playing with the starters, he can be like a great defender with an insane work rate, you know, cuts hard off ball, keeps the ball moving. Yeah. Some of the stuff we saw him do last night. But part part of the starting fight, I mean, KCP, even this year, it feels like it's a downturn. He's shooting 40% from three, or at least he was before last night. Like the, the, as great as the two-man game is with the finale oop lingering, the part that's easiest to forget is that KCP and Mike are stretching the floor, and yeah. it looks so different. They're if, la- absolute lasers. Lasers, and defenders know it, right? Like, imagine being so concerned about the Jokic-Murray pick-and-roll and not being able to leave your guy anyway. 
because he's that good of a shooter. And Denver has two of them. And even when just one of those guys are out, that dynamic changes. So that's where you really would get significantly worse is not just the made shots from Christian, but also I think the spacing teams would teams would sag in a way they don't off KCP, Yeah, I think. Yeah, he's got to become a better shooter, absolutely. He's just got to become a more willing and a quicker shooter. And you're right. I mean, the underrated part about the KCP Mike dynamic is that they're two of the best shooters in the NBA. Full stop. Full stop. They're just incredible three-point shooters. And you obviously take a huge downgrade with CB there. But if they do lose KCP, I think that's the default option. Christian Brown's the starting two. I think that's what they would do. And it's not a bad option. I just think you lose something in your half-court offense. Absolutely. Sure. Yeah. Now, like, if they lose KCP, I'm sure they'll go out and get another guard. Sure. Uh, but maybe that guy comes off the bench and but like, I, I wouldn't when, be surprised if it's CB starting. Yeah. When he plays with Jokic and, and co., he looks all right, you know? Yeah. Like, Christian Brown's not going to buoy a, a five-man bench unit. He's just not. But he can do enough dirty work and winning stuff alongside talented players. Uh, let's hit a final break. Some final questions on the other side here. And, uh, yeah, that's where we'll wrap up on today's show. Cool, man. Let's do it. Bet365, where it's never ordinary, unless it's dev winning money. That's pretty ordinary. At Bet365, they don't do ordinary. They believe every sport should be epic. Right now, new customers can choose between two offers. When they open an account at Bet365, use the code DNVR365 to sign up, deposit $10, choose between either a bet and get offer, and place a bet of five or more, and get 150 in bonus bets, or... A first bet safety net offer by placing a bet up to $1,000. And if your qualifying bet loses, you receive a matched refund in bonus bets. It's always fun to play along with us on our pregame shows, play along with us on our watch alongs. Again, we're not professional gamblers, but it's your own risk. You know, take your own advice over ours, but you can, you can bet with us. And there are little fun bets we found throughout the year, not just the obvious stuff with Jokic and Porter threes, but... Will Christian Brown knock down one tonight? Will Peyton Watt? Where's the juice? Is it Peyton or Christian? And it's always fun to just celebrate a random moment in the game that seems like it's ordinary, but it's not because you have Bet365. You must be 21 and up and physically located in Colorado. Please gamble responsibly. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem and wants help, call or text 1 800 Gambler. That Peyton Watson three hitting last night was big. I knew that was a good bet the second you put it in, brother. It's important to start saving for college early. Maybe you're Christian Brown and you've won every basketball game you've ever played in and you're pretty sure you're going to Kansas on a full scholarship. Chances are that's not the case. The rest of you need a plan. College Invest makes it easy with flexible savings plans. It's important to start saving early. You'll benefit from a Colorado tax deduction. Savings can also be used for trade schools and apprenticeships nationwide. Open your account at collegeinvest.org today. All right, back here on the DNVR Nuggets podcast from the Toyota Lounge. Brennan Bassford asks, looking at the remaining schedule for both teams, what's the likelihood that next Wednesday's last regular season home game against the Wolves is critical Will either team be resting their starters by that point? So, I mean, right now, Nuggets are 53 and 23. The Wolves are 52 and 23. Denver's got one more <gasps> win. They're tied in the loss column. Let me look at Minnesota's upcoming schedule here. They've got the Raptors, Suns, Lakers, Wizards, Nuggets. Probably a tougher schedule than Denver. Here's my thinking. It could be the game that clinches like the one seed for the Nuggets. Yeah. I feel like both teams will probably be relatively in the same position in the standings. By now. I don't think there's going to be a ton of separation down the stretch from any of these three teams. Nuggets, Timberwolves, or Thunder. It really might come down to who just wants the one seed in the end. And that kind of might be cool because maybe we'll be like, oh, the Nuggets actually want it. They're playing everybody. Maybe Minnesota doesn't, and we learn that they actually don't care as much about it. Yeah, it's also weird, too, because you got the plan dynamic now. So as far as, like, those top seeds, it's a little harder to game the system, kind of. So 
you know, for I first of all, I think all three of these teams should just want the one seed. Denver less so than the other two. Um, they, it's not that they shouldn't want it. I just think they can have a bit more to fall back on. Like if you're the Thunder, the, what's the best way to fight inexperience? Well, play on your home floor the whole time. If you're the Wolves, it, it, I mean, it's obvious. They should all want it. And I'm with you. I think it's just going to come down to that. I don't, I don't see anyone really... It would take a, a really bad loss here from one of these teams to change the picture significantly before that. So, I mean, I think Jokic will play in that game. I think the, the only one I'd... You know, is Murray going to play in that game? Right. Is he going to play at all at this point? I think he'll play before the playoffs, yeah. I, I think so, too. I think so, too. I would love it if that final game against Minnesota is the final dress rehearsal for the playoffs. I want a game against Minnesota where everybody's at 100% yeah, here. Yeah, and you just go full eight-man rotation. Yeah. And you just kind of... you really That you would really, be fun. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. And the, one of the weird things about the Nuggets-Wolves matchups over the last two years is, like, it seems like either team, one of the two teams, if not both, are missing key guys. Or there's a landslide difference in effort between either team. And it's... I'd be interesting to get a much more, I think, clean look at at, uh, at what this matchup could be. This comes from Alex Swingle. I like this question. For Jokic's MVP case, what play from this season would you showcase that best encapsulates his impact for the award? Is it the two alley-oops, neither of which were caught on live television? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe. It could be. Uh, that or the finale, one of the finale, you say, and Gordon. The Black Magic pass against the Knicks. You could also, there is the game winner in Golden State. Game winner against Golden because State. The game winner, that, that has that very translatable. Clean, yeah, it might be that. That's the, yeah. I think it's that. It's probably that one, actually. I think it's that. But I would also show one of the plays where he just, um, and I've broken these down on Twitter before, but where he just. Tells everybody where to stand, yep. and then tells everybody what to do, and then the Nuggets get a wide open shot to win the game. <laughs> that that's those. always nice too. I'd say it's probably the Warriors game winner though. But yeah. that's the funny thing about Jokic is, you know, I think you could, okay, you could show the Kyrie left handed floater and be and say this is the guy that's mastered basketball. Just look at this clip. Uh, but I think yo the way that Jokic is clearly the MVP and the best player alive. It's not about the one play he did where you go, could anyone ever stop that? It's not about scoring 70 points one time against the worst team in the league. It's about just every single night having full control over the outcome or virtually full control. And you can never fully encapsulate that with one number, one play, one talking point. You just have to watch him. And it's why, ironically, ironically, they tried, to, they tried to call us calculator boys. But Jokic is the ultimate eye test guy, and he always was. You just have to watch him night in and night out. And once you do, it'll be very, very clear to you who the best player is. Nuggets fan 1122 with the new straw poll all but confirming Jokic will be getting his third MVP. What's the ceiling on the amount of MVPs he can win before it's all said and done? Ceiling, I'm going to say five. Five just, or six. Just because getting to six is a little... Like, I'm just not going to predict that he gets to six. Well, I mean, six, he would tie Kareem. Right. Who has the most all time. Kareem has six. Bill Russell has five. Jordan has five. Wilt has four. LeBron has four. I, thi I think he gets four. I think he gets one more. And I think he's in the Wilt-LeBron territory. I'm going to call his ceiling five. So... I think it might be like six or seven, actually, because <laughs> the 65 game rule oh. is something that is going to work in Jokic's favor forever. It's a great point. You know, until he's, you know, 36, 37, 38, and he has to take some games off. But so many guys are going to get disqualified because they don't play 65 games. He's always going to play 65 games. He's always going to have crazy stats. His advanced stats are always going to be off the charts. He's always going to be in the conversation. Is six on the table? Yeah. 
It's on the table. It's on the table. You just have to... You just have... Because the conversation then gets really weird, right? It's not, does he deserve MVP in this one season we're looking at? It's, do we make him the second player ever to win six MVPs? And media, I think, can get weird about that stuff, perhaps. I mean, there's a... Like LeBron and Jordan, Jordan only LeBron only has four. Jordan only has five, and I'm saying only because I think each of those guys had more years where they were clearly the best player in the league. But yeah. winning an MVP is sort of a different thing. And as we saw last year, all types of all types of little factors can impact this stuff. So six is a lot. I'm gonna say five. But I mean, is he good enough to get six? Sure, man. He's he's one of the very very best ever. Final question here. Let me know what's. Uh, what you guys think of this in the Toyota chat? What are the five best toppings to have on pizza? Our guy Matthew Kimura. The five best. Pepperoni's one. I mean, we all know that. Oh, this is my worst take. I hate pepperoni. What the hell? I know. I you, can't. I can't rationalize that. I can't explain it to you. I think I'm wrong. I do think I'm you're wrong. You're wrong. But I. I so, don't, what's your favorite topping? On pizza? Yeah. I kind of don't love toppings on pizza. I'll do sausage. Yeah. I'll do sausage pizza. Okay. I like a, a pl- I like a regular slice, cheese slice. Kale? I'm a cheese slice guy. Brennan vote what? <laughs> he doesn't like pepperoni. Where I come from, the pizza is so good. It doesn't need any. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, there yeah there you but you're just like they out still here put va- pepperoni on it. Though, you're basically. just out here vouching for cheese pizza as the top pizza. Yeah, cheese pizza is the best, dude. Wow. Um, cheese pizza is the best pizza. I mean, pepperoni's the go. I mean, I yeah, think yeah, pepperoni is yeah. the best too. Chat's chat's like already. <laughs> vote what yeah sorry guys i like sausage is sausage i like sausage sausage is fine all right it's fine it's not pepperoni but it's fine right sausage and canadian bacon is the best combo of all right of toppings i like to throw some veggies on there i'm not afraid of that i'm not afraid either i could i'll throw some peppers on a pizza yeah some peppers some mushrooms i'm not afraid of that yeah dude mushrooms sneaky good one sneaky good one i love some fresh basil on a pizza sure cheese is vote seven no vote comes from a place where they make good pizza so i don't need to actually turn my pizza into something else to enjoy it <laughs> i think we have a couple super chats uh before we get out of here mile high sing does okc not want the f- the one seed harrison i was thinking about this actually sga is out again i was thinking about this because if i'm okc i don't want to play the lakers you know yeah and I mean, it's a one in four shot because Lakers are the play in. But if you're the Thunder, like, I don't, you've had such a good regular season. You feel so good about your team. This is the same thing with the Nuggets. You can't be scared of anybody in the no. play in. You can't. No. You, you cannot. also, I think, like, you run a bigger risk trying to game stuff. Just get a one seat and have your home court yes. and then try to win there. Yeah. So maybe, but I don't think that's the right idea. Yeah. It was a thought I had. Uh, mile high sing but i i can't wrap my head around them actually not wanting the one right. seed. i i it th- would not make sense to me and to change your team mentality right now after yeah. being so relentless all year you cannot be that scared of the warriors i agree with you or the lakers or the suns first team super chatter bashir daoud what up voting harrison who got the chain last game did you the get- defensive player of the game chain yeah I didn't know. I didn't uh, see that. Adam was at the arena. Well, that explains why we don't know. Um, that's a great question. Who they, do you think they did not tweet out the video like I they usually do? I don't feel like do. KCP had like a standout defensive no, game. KCP was actually kind of bad. He is the default defensive player of the game. Maybe Aaron Shane Gordon receiver. Peyton Watson. Peyton yeah, Watson had, had three blocks. stocks, I think. Right. That's a good question, Bashir. Let's see if I can figure that out. I'm looking at the video right now. Wait. Is it Justin Holiday? Justin Holiday? God, Malone is so funny, dude. The fireman. The fireman. I hope he said that in the video. It, yeah, it was like Justin there Holiday. Were two chains. Justin Holiday. Oh, Holiday and, Aaron and AG. Gordon. Yeah. We're really losing the plot with defensive player of the game chains. It's. I think it's just. Uh, Keep it to one chain, people. I know. We can't. I mean, what? This time next year, we're gonna have five chains. We're giving out. Every. We're giving out participation trophies yeah. right now. Big, biggest shot of the game chain. Jokic. Give out one chain. One chain per game. It's the defensive so player of the game. It's not that hard. You got to pick one, man. Man up. Man up and make a choice. All right. 
Guys, thanks for hanging out with us today. Great questions on the mailbag. Congrats to Nicole Jokic on a third MVP. Happy he got it. Um, cool. Nuggets are on the road for one. They play the Clippers tomorrow in LA. We'll be here to break it all down for you uh, live from the Toyota Lounge. Talk to you guys then.